Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to have an overview of users, group roles and policies, which are very important components of IAM and uh, the introduction of IAM we have already covered in our video number six, right? So coming on the components of IAM, as you know, that user groups and roles are the very, very important part of IAM right for authorization and authentication and with the help of policies we can assign the permissions which are actually used to judge the authentication and the authorization of these three principles right so let us have an overview that how these actually uh, these components work together so what we have with us is our aws account right it is the same account that we have created in our series only the free tier account okay so you have your account and in that account you can create users groups roles and policies right so this is created within the account now talking about a user user is nothing but a physical person who has certain permissions associated to it in form of policies and it can perform any task on any resource of AWS if he or she is allowed to do it. Now, these users can be grouped together in form of a group, right? So we can have a group and a user can be a part of that particular group, right? And then the user will gains the permission which is applied to the group through the policy. So here we need to understand that the policy can be attached to an individual user and it can also be attached to a group, right? And whenever a policy is attached to a group, the permissions which are granted or not granted through the policy will be inherited by each and every user that belong to that group, right? So, one of the most benefit of using groups is we do not have to make a user and then attach a policy to it then make another user and then attach the same policy to it if there are a group of users which are allowed certain specific uh, authorization only then we can group them together right and apply a single policy to them right so yes policy can also be associated to groups now coming to roles roles are very important and we will be having a complete detailed uh, discussion about ro roles in the upcoming sections. So roles are used for delegation and they are assumed, right? So we can create a role and that role can be assigned to a user, that role can be assigned to an application and that application will assume to have that role and can act accordingly, right? So we will be discussing it in detail further. Now coming to the policy, as we all know, policy defines the permission for the identities or resources they are associated with. Right, so that was a brief introduction. Now coming on each and every component individually. Talking about in detail what is a user. An IAM user is an identity with an associated credentials and permissions attached to it. Right, now this could be an actual person who is a user or it could be an application that is a user. So yes, it can be a physical person and it can be an application which is willing to use certain resources of AWS. With IAM, you can securely manage access to AWS services by creating an IAM user name for each employee in your organization. Each IAM user is associated with only one account. By default, a newly created user is not authorized to perform any action in AWS. So this is done uh, in order to keep security intact and we have to attach policies to the user so that they can perform any actions. The advantage of having one-to-one -one user specification is that you can individually assign permission to each user, right? So you can be very specific and definitely IAM is a security related services. So this makes the working of any uh, employer of your organization uh, secure right now so let us study it in a graphical manner also 
so what we have with us we have our free tier account right so what we do we sign in with the help of our user and password it could be a free tier account in, in our case it is free tier it can be any aws account right so you can log in to that account and you can when you actually log in into your account you log in as a root user so by default whenever we create any account v becomes the root user right the terminology is used as root user this is the admin right so this root user has full permission because it is the admin and it's a best practice to avoid using the root account because if root accounts credentials are compromised it is allowed to do everything in aws account right so the resource resources can be misused at that particular time so it is best practice not to use the root user right create an im user actually and if you are using it then enable mfa on it mfa is multi factor authentication that is also we are going to discuss in the upcoming lectures right so with the help of iam what we can do we can create multiple users in our account right so let's say a b and c are the users which we have created through iam so they are iam users right up to 5000 individual user account can be created so a huge number of account can be users can be created in a free tier account and as well as in any account users have no permissions by default right so these people are not actually authorized anything to do right now we have to attach policy to them then only they can act nothing is how we can actually log in as an iam user although we will be seeing this in our hands on but here i shall be explaining theoretically if user c wants to open the console and perform any task right or wants to actually access any resource which is uh, in our aws account so it can have two ways right the first one is to log in into the console with the help of a username and password right this is uh, password access the second thing is we can also access aws application through cli and api api is sdks right software development kits we have uh, a lot of software development kits available for aws to access that means you can access the console with the help of password you can also have a command line access to aws and also you can write certain program and you can have access through the code that is through api right so this is how authentication is done right for console it is username and password right and for the programmatic access and command line access we have access keys right and secret access keys so this is this thing is you uh, this thing you have to remember that for console we have username and password and for programmatic access we have access keys right access key and secret access key right so you need to remember this thing so that was a brief introduction that how we actually create our user now the next thing is groups right a collection of iam user is iam group right so if we group together the users that is an iam group you can use iam groups to specify permission for multiple users so that any permission applied to the group are applied to the individual users in the group as well managing groups is quite easy right so this i have told you already you set permissions for the group and those permissions are automatically applied to the users in that group if you add another user to the group the new user will automatically inherit all the policies and the permission already assigned to that group this lessens the administrative burden so that is the main aim of creating groups now a group can only contain users a group cannot have a group inside it so nesting of groups is not allowed this is something very important a user don't have to belong to a group so it is not necessary if you are creating an iam user that user have to be inside any group no it can remain outside the group boundaries also and a user can belong to multiple groups right so let us say we have two users a and b right they are the employees of your company and they are actually working in the 
production department so you can make a group with the name of production group and you can add these user into that particular group now you have uh, let's say few more employees and they are also working in your organization but in the development team right so you can create a group of development team and group them together now there is a possibility that out of these four people there are two people b and c who are working together for the auditing team let's say right so you can also create a group right and put these two users inside that group so you can see that user b is now part of production and audit team and c is a part of development and auditing team right so that is possible now you can have another employee in your organization who does not belong to any of these groups right maybe he has any other role to perform so a single user can also remain now in order to allow these people to work something on aws resources have to apply policies to these groups right so policies can be attached to groups also and policies can be attached to individual also about policies let us study what is policy how it works let us move to the next topic to test policies and i am policy sets permission and control access to aws resources policies are stored in aws as json documents permissions specify who has access to the resources and what actions they can perform the policy would contain the following information who can access it right second thing what actions that users can take what actually they are going to perform which aws resource the user can access and which they cannot access right and even when they can be accessed right so it is a form of restriction right basically it is a form of restrictions as you know that when we create a user everything or every actions is denied by default right so user cannot do anything in order to do something they need permission right and the policy is a document if a user or a group processes that policy they are allowed to do certain things right now let us see talking about policies see we can create a user we know that we can create group and we can also create roles that we are going to study after policies right so these three are the principles right now in order to act anything on the resources resources can be any service provided by aws these three principles should have a policy associated to them right so here the policy is known as identity based policy right so a policy which is attached to the principles that is either user group or roles is known as identity based policies right then we can have certain resources let's say s3 bucket or dynamo db these are the services which are provided by aws s3 bucket is a storage service s3 dynamo db is a database now these are resources these resources can also have policy which is known as resource based policy right since both the principles and the resources can have policies attached to them right these are the permission now what is identity and resource based policy we are going to study them separately because they are very important in a different section here we are just having an overview what a policy is so policies are documents that define permissions right and they are written in json all permissions are implicitly denied by default right so that we know if we create a group no permissions will be given to it if i create a user no permissions will be given to it if i want to store something and create a bucket again no permissions will be given to it we have to assign the policies right now we have seen that the policies are written in json now what is json so here you can see on your screen this is a i am policy right it is the administrator access policy right so you can see that there is certain statements written over here so uh, first of all this is not a program right this is a statement so json stands for javascript object notation right so it is a standard text based format for representing structured data based on javascript object syntax right so it is 
so it is commonly used for transmitting data in web application and all right so it is a json document you can see that first thing is the version of the policy that when it was created then there is a group of statements which says effect right we will be discussing it in detail again but here it is just an introduction so the first thing is effect right and effect can have only two values it is a key value pair effect and this is the key this is the value so effect says allow means you are allowing something to happen right what you are allowing you are allowing any action right it can have allow or deny right so if you say effect allow that means you are allowing an action right now this action is having a value star which is a wild card right and it says effect because it's an admin ad administrative access so it has all the uh, ability to perform any task so effect allow this is for all yeah or every every action on every resource right so that is how we actually read the policies this is a very simple example but all the complicated examples also we shall be discussing as they will be appearing in our syllabus or the course of uh, the series right so that is how we actually look at and understand an im policy now the last topic which is left with us is our role right an im role is a set of permissions that define what actions are allowed and denied by an entity in an aws console however instead of being uniquely associated with one person a role is intended to be assumed by anyone who need it right also a role does not have any standard long term credentials such as password or access keys associated to it it has a temporary security credentials right for a role session so you can have a temporary access to services with the help of roles and roles are always assumed right for example i am teaching you right teaching is a role teacher this is a role and i am assuming that role that okay i am a teacher and i am delivering this lecture so always remember roles are assumed by someone who actually needs that particular role right now coming to how it works so we can have an aws account and we can create a role inside it right now talking about this thing iam role is an iam identity that has a specific permission so remember one thing users have permissions through policy groups have permissions through policy and roles also have permissions through policy right so all the three principles are associated with certain policy to perform any task that is very important now roles are assumed by user applications and services that i have told you already now suppose we have certain i am users or we can have an application with us right and these both application and i am user want to access certain resources that are present in the aws maybe an ec2 instance maybe a s3 bucket and or database or anything right so what they are going to do they are going to make use of sts assume role api now what is sts sts is security token service right so this is this actually provides us with the temporary credentials right so whenever this users or this application want to access any aws resources they go to the role right they assume that role that okay i have the role have permissions right so they assume that they have that permission because the role is associated with them and to the role there is a policy which is associated right so this role has certain permission these two entities the users and the application assume this role right assume that role and also assume that the policy is attached to them so that they can make use of any aws resources once assumed the identity becomes the role and gains the role permission right so that is how we actually access resources with the help of roles remember that this is a short term access right so this security credentials which is given by this sts it is temporary right so it is a short term access then we can have different account also we can have cross account access also so so let us say we have another aws account and there are certain users right and they users can also be assigned the same role right and through this particular role 
right they have the permissions to access the s3 bucket right so this is role right how it actually works again the detailed and detailed discussion and hands on will be coming up in the uh, upcoming lectures but for now that is all with this lecture and i hope that the working of roles groups policies and uh, you know users will be clear to you all i hope you enjoyed this lecture and i shall be seeing you in the next class